Adam, what more can you tell us? Uh, Houston defensive lineman Danico Autry has been suspended six games lower for violating the NFL's performance enhancing substance policy. Autry said that violation of the policy was because his doctor submitted a prescription for a different medication that contained a banned substance. But the fact of the matter is he still is suspended six games, which is something of a blow to Houston, which would have liked to have had him available for the start of the upcoming season. Yeah, we'll throw the schedule up here in just a bit so you can see exactly which games yeah. he'll miss. But RC, how big a loss of this is this for Houston? This is huge. He is a premier inside pass rusher. and You're going to pair him with Will Anderson Jr. on one side and Daniil Hunter on the other. This was a major pickup of the offseason for the Houston Texans. And I think we've talked about some of the other acquisitions a little bit more than we've talked about this one. But think of all these teams that have had these great interior rushers. When you can go to Matabike, you think about Quentin Williams. Obviously, what Chris Jones has done in Kansas City as well. And the GOAT of them all, Aaron, Aaron Donald and who he was in Los Angeles. I believe they were expecting that sort of impact from him on the inside with the rest of those people on that defense. And so I think this is a huge loss for the first six games of the season. Yeah, I agree. This is significant, not just because of Autry's ability, his versatility, his strength uh, as both a pass rusher and as a run defender, but also because of what uh, D'Amico Ryans, uh, the head coach of the Texans, asks of the defensive line. They do not blitz. They blitz it amongst the lowest lights, rates in the league. And they also defend the run with light boxes. What that means is he needs a very solid, versatile, complete four-man front. And losing Autry really hurts in that regard. This is one of the signings that flew under the radar a little bit. But when they made it, I loved it. I thought, oh, that is perfect for the Texans. And unfortunately, we won't see it now for several games. Yeah, Autry finished with 11 and a half sacks last season, the first double-digit sack season of his career. At least he'll be motivated when he comes back. Time out for some top stories with Adam. Let's start in Detroit. What more can you tell us is happening there, Adam? Well, Laura, the Detroit Lions got a three-year extension done with Taylor Decker. Three years, $60 million. And obviously, they will continue to have his services for a long time. He was entering the last year of his contract. He's now signed through the year 2027. So they keep one of their most popular and talented players there in Detroit, a big move for the Lions. And then the Cowboys pass rusher, Sam Williams, went down during practice yesterday, turned out to be a torn ACL, devastating. Never want to lose a player at all. Certainly don't want to lose a player during training camp. And now they've lost a pass rusher that this team was counting on to compliment Micah Parsons, a big blow to the Dallas Cowboys defense. And then the uh, Samson Ekubon suffered a torn Achilles for the Colts. He was their leading sacker last year, nine and a half sacks, which is a blow to the Colts defense. So again, the Cowboys lose a pass rusher. The Colts lose a pass rusher. This is not the way that you want to start a summer, but this is exactly what's happened here in Indianapolis and with the Dallas Cowboys. And the New England Patriots have lost their standout defensive tackle. Christian Barmore indefinitely after the team diagnosed him and treated him for blood clots over the weekend. They're not even thinking about when he might be well again and be able to play. They want to make sure he gets the proper medical attention. The Patriots staff was smart enough to recognize that there was an issue this weekend. They got him to the hospital. They got him diagnosed. They got him treated. And we'll see when Christian Barmore can make it back to the football field. But that's a distant concern right now. They're more focused on treating him the right way. Good thing they found that out this weekend. Could have been a lot worse. Yeah, well said. And sending our thoughts to Christian and his family. And now for some top stories. A lot's going on. Adam Schefter, let's start in San Francisco. What more can you tell us? Laura, the 49ers continue to await the return of Brandon Ayuk to practice. He has not been in practice. He's been holding his knapsack. He's been staging a hold in as he wants a new contract and asked for a trade before training camp. The two sides continue talking to see if there's a solution, but in an exploding wide receiver market, it's difficult to do a deal. Meanwhile, Trent Williams, their all pro left tackle, also not in camp. He also wants a raise more in line with some of the highest paid offensive tackles in the league, which we certainly know that Trent Williams is. He's also 36 years old. That's what the Niners have to juggle. How do you pay an aging veteran when he is as valuable and as great 
as Trent Williams is. And in Tampa, they have a financial issue of their own. Tristan Wirfs, their three-time Pro Bowl left tackle, did not practice today for the first time during camp. Practiced last week, but today skipped it for his own mini hold-in as he continues to await a contract that, if it gets done, likely would make him the highest paid offensive tackle in football. He wants a new deal, and until he gets a new deal, he's not practicing out there right now, so we'll see how that situation plays out as well, Laura. Everybody wants to get paid. Let's go to Bengals camp where there's other news around players not practicing. The Bengals have made it clear they don't feel a deal with star wideout Jamar Chase is imminent and he is not practicing. Here's Bengals head coach Zach Taylor on if he expects to see Chase on the field for the first practice in pads tomorrow. That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> he and I, he, again, he and I have talked through it and, and we'll just continue to stick with our plan. He and I have been on the same page with everything he's done. I, I've been I've been pleased with a his interaction with his teammates and helping some of these young guys. Very aware, very engaged. Same as always been good, positive. Zach Taylor was a little tickled there because the reporter almost got him to say something else. <laughs> we now welcome in Dan Graziano. He was at practice today with the Bengals. Graz, what can you tell us about how Cincinnati is trying to manage the Jamar Chase contract situation and whether he's holding in or any of that. He's out here on the practice field. He wears a baseball cap. He's out here with his shoes untied. It's pretty clear that he has no intention of practicing when he comes out here. Now, he's involved, right? Like he's actually like on the side of some of the drills with the receivers, helping other guys figure out what they did right and what they did wrong in a certain drill. So it's not as if he's not engaged, but he's not actually practicing. So that must be the plan that Zach Taylor keeps referring to every time he gets asked about it. Uh, they have had conversations about a new contract, but they just haven't got to the point of agreement yet. And, and I really don't get the sense that anything is imminent. Uh, I guess the right phone call can always change that. But at this point, he has not been practicing. He's been out here. The Bengals insist, Zach Taylor insists that everything is good, that everybody knows where each other stands. Uh, the question, of course, is when will he practice? They aren't concerned about his chemistry with Joe Burrow. That dates back a few years, as we all know. But uh, they would like to see him on the practice field and, and obviously, you know, in time for the start of the regular season. Yeah, we'll keep our eye on all of that. As you mentioned there, Graz, one phone call could maybe change it and make something happen. Thanks for the latest there in Cincinnati. RC, how big of a deal is it that Chase isn't participating in this part of training camp? Well, this part of training camp, I don't really have concern about that, Laura, but I do have a concern when we hear that a deal isn't imminent or they aren't close to making a deal. Could this thing leak over into the regular season? We know how important Jamar Chase is not only to the Bengals offense, but to Joe Burrow in particular, the chemistry that these two have, sort of the synergy that they have on the deep ball, whether to throw it up the field or back shoulder, and also Jamar Chase's progression in route running and placement on the offense last year during some of the time when Joe Burrow was down with a calf injury was extremely important. And so to not have Jamar on the field in a year where you've already lost Tyler Boyd, you've already lost Joe Mixon to the Houston Texans would be abs absolutely catastrophic for the Cincinnati Bengals. And so in their if for, for what they need to do going into the season, they need to figure out how they could just get him on the field if they can't get a deal done. Yeah, that's the offense. And then on the defensive side, Trey Hendrickson dealing with an injury. I mean, Cincinnati really struggled last season. What needs to change defensively for them to get yeah. back to being a top team in the AFC? A lot, because... Uh, this defense really struggled last year, and it kind of flew under the radar, right? Because once Joe Burrow got hurt, expectations sort of dissipated for this team. But it, it was really the defense uh, that was the biggest problem, uh, surprisingly, in, in some ways. And there's a number of things you can point to where they struggled at. I thought they gave up too many explosives. You go out, you bring in Geno Stone from the Ravens. You bring back Von Bell at safety. That should help. But what really stuck out to me was how bad they were on first down. Dead last in the NFL and DVOA on first down. Uh, allowed an average of 6.6 .6 yards per play, which means you're in second and short on average, which basically means you've yeah. already lost. A lot of that has to do with struggles defending the run up front, so they need to be better in that regard. Missed tackles, frankly, at all three levels. Uh, Lou Anarumo is one of the better defensive coordinators in the NFL. 
Uh, so they really need a bounce back season from his unit. Yeah, that was one of the shocking things is Lou Anarumo has been so good. So many people talking about him even as a head coaching yes. candidate. You know he's going to put the pressure on too. As a dedicated fan of the Philadelphia Eagles, analyzing the potential impact of Tyler Steen's absence on the team offers a fascinating glimpse into the depth and versatility of our roster. Steen's injury undoubtedly disrupts the continuity along the offensive line, but it also provides a golden opportunity for other players to step up and make a significant statement during training camp. Max Sharping, the underdog with experience. Max Sharping, often viewed as a long shot for a starting position, now has a chance to showcase his skills. While his journey to becoming a starter might seem unlikely, especially on a team as stacked as the Eagles, his experience cannot be ignored. Sharping has logged over 2,000 offensive snaps in his career, which brings a wealth of knowledge and adaptability to the table. Though his recent playing time has been limited, the current injuries along the offensive line could allow him to prove his worth. If Sharping can capitalize on this opportunity, his presence could add valuable depth to our line, something that's always crucial in a grueling NFL season. Matt Hennessy, the versatile asset. Matt Hennessy's versatility is a significant asset, especially in a scenario where injuries are reshuffling the lineup. His ability to play multiple positions along the line makes him a valuable chess piece for the coaching staff. Hennessy has often found himself on the bubble in 53-man roster projections, but with Steen sidelined, he now has the chance to solidify his spot. His adaptability and experience could prove crucial, particularly if he steps up during preseason games. For a team that values flexibility and depth, Hennessy's performance during this period could cement his role as a key contributor. Trevor Keegan, the promising prospect. Trevor Keegan, despite being a newcomer, has already made a strong impression. His accolades from college, including first-team All-Big Ten honors, demonstrate his potential. Transitioning from NCAA to the NFL is a substantial leap, but early indications suggest that Keegan is adapting well. With Steen's injury opening up more opportunities, Keegan will likely see increased snaps, especially during the preseason. This period will be crucial for him to prove that he can handle the physical and mental demands of professional football. If he continues to impress, Keegan could secure a spot on the roster and even challenge for significant playing time. The Significance of Chemistry and Continuity one of the key aspects to consider is the importance of chemistry along the offensive line. Jeff Stoutland, our renowned offensive line coach, emphasizes building cohesion among his starters. Steen was getting significant snaps at right guard with the first team, which was crucial for developing this chemistry. His absence could disrupt this process, but it also allows other players to develop their rapport with the starting lineup. The question remains whether Steen will seamlessly reintegrate into the first team upon his return or if Mackay Becton or another contender will seize the opportunity and make the decision more complex. The intriguing addition of Nick Gates. The recent addition of Nick Gates adds another layer of intrigue. Gates, with his experience playing for two NFC East rivals, brings a wealth of knowledge and resilience. Despite the saying, last in, First out, Gates' extensive experience and ability to provide depth make him an intriguing addition. His presence could indicate concerns about Steen's ankle injury, suggesting it might be more serious than initially thought. If Gates can quickly adapt and prove his worth, he might defy the odds and secure a spot on the 53-man roster. Final Thoughts Tyler Steen's absence is undoubtedly a setback, but it also provides a valuable opportunity for other players to step up and showcase their talents. Max Sharping, Matt Hennessy, Trevor Keegan, and Nick Gates all have unique strengths that could bolster our offensive line. As fans, we eagerly anticipate how these players will rise to the occasion, 
Knowing that the depth and resilience of our roster could turn this challenge into a defining moment for the team. The competition and adaptability displayed during this period will not only shape the final roster, but also set the tone for a resilient and cohesive offensive line as we head into the new season. Fly, Eagles, fly. Daiane dos Santos reage a vídeo com Rebeca Andrade, ainda criança, muito fofinha. Ginasta, hoje com 25 anos, fez parte do time que conquistou a inédita medalha de bronze por equipes para o Brasil nas Olimpíadas de Paris. A inédita medalha de bronze do Brasil na disputa por equipes da ginástica artística nas Olimpíadas de Paris, foi uma conquista de várias gerações. Um desses nomes é o da ginasta Daiane dos Santos, campeã mundial no solo em 2003. Atualmente comentarista dos canais Globo, ela foi pega de surpresa no programa Savá Parir com um antigo vídeo em que ele, ainda como atleta, aparece junto de um, ainda criança, Rebeca Andrade, hoje principal nome da ginástica brasileira e que conquistou nesta terça-feira a sua terceira medalha olímpica. A reação de Daiane ao vídeo, a mais natural possível, muito fofinha, né gente? Bom, acima nós temos uma imagem da atual campeã olímpica Rebeca Andrade quando ainda era criança. Esta entrevista apareceu no Esporte TV 2 ao vivo. Rebeca Andrade ainda disputará mais três finais em Paris. Na próxima quinta-feira, o individual geral, no sábado, o salto e na segunda-feira, as finais do solo e também da trave. Bom, é isso, galera. Acima nós temos uma um vídeo né, de Daiane dos Santos reagindo ao vídeo em questão antigo com Rebeca Andrade. Mais notícias, continuem por dentro do nosso canal ou acessem o site oficial do GE para mais informações. Eu vou ficando por aqui. Se inscreva no nosso canal para continuar por dentro, completamente ligado no mundo dos esportes. Deixe o seu like para nos ajudar e ative o sininho de notificação para ficar por dentro das atualizações.